Now the NHRA in America. We're at Indianapolis Raceway Park. You can see the oval on the right there of the picture. And on the left there is the drag strip that is the center of attention of this event. This is one of the major events of the year. Probably one of the most important for the drivers, for the competitors and teams in terms of uh, taking the win here, the prestige, more than just about anywhere else. We're taking a look, first of all, at the semi-finals of the Pro Stock category. And Greg Anderson up against Mike Edwards. Mike Edwards in the blue car on the right-hand side of the picture. Won this event 12 months ago. And now trying to make it through to the final for his second year in succession. Away they go then, these two pro stock machines. About 1,200 horsepower from these machines. Much more standard than the funny cars, which we'll be seeing later on. The win goes to Anderson. So Greg Anderson will be going through into the final, and Mike Edwards will not make it. A back-to-back -back victory here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Anderson getting the better start and leading from there to the line. And Anderson into the final, the first time in his career that he's made it through to the final of a national event of the NHRA. So delight for the team. And there is the man that he used to be the crew chief for, Warren Johnson. Would you believe it, Gary? Greg Anderson, the man we saw just now, uh, used to be crew chief for Warren Johnson. Jack Coughlin next up in this second semi-final with Warren Johnson. And you'll look at Warren Johnson's car nearest the camera there, the black car. It's got Superman on it. And uh, as part of a promotional exploit this year, Superman appearing on a variety of American racing cars. We saw it on Jimmy Vassar's Champ car earlier on this season. Now it's on Warren Johnson's Pro Stock here. So the second semi-final about to get underway. Who's it going to be? Johnson nearest us. Away they go, and Johnson, I think, has a no, it's even, even Stevens all the way to the line, who's got it across the line, and it's Johnson who just takes it, but by such a tiny, tiny margin, Warren Johnson will go through to the final, but uh, he nearly pulled it off, did Jeff Coughlin, just .001 ahead was Johnson, take a look at this overhead view, and you can see just how evenly matched the Pontiac Firebird of Warren Johnson Johnson and the Oldsmobile Cutlass of Jack Coughlin were, of course, uh, somewhat different to their standard road-going brethren. These machines, as I say, producing about 1,200 horsepower, and that's plenty more than uh, their road-going cousin, about eight times more, perhaps, than a, the average road car. So, the final for the Pro Stocks is set up. We will now turn our attention for the moment to the semi-finals of the Funny Cars. And in the first of the semi-finals, we have Scotty Cannon and Frank Pedregon. We're looking at Frank Pedregon at the moment with the Penthouse-sponsored machine. There is Scotty Cannon, a very suitable name for a drag racer. And Frank Pedregon on the far side put John Force out of this competition already in the first session of the day. John Force, the multiple funny car champion and uh, winner again this year, just not performing well here at the Indianapolis Raceway Park. Look at these two blasting across the line. It's Pedregon who wins it. So it's Frank Pedregon who beats uh, Scotty Cannon to go through to the final of the funny cars. And the sheer speed and power of the funny cars were up to five and a half thousand horsepower with these machines compared to the 1200 horsepower of the Pro Stocks we were watching a minute ago. And you can just see the difference for yourself. They're running on nitromethane as opposed to running on normal petrol. Massive horsepower, massive speed. Now we're on to the second semi-final. And this one features Bob Gilbertson and Jim Epler. There's Jim Epler with the eyes on the side of his car. Pretty remarkable livery for Jim Epler. An effective burnout, a chance to clean and warm the rear tyres that have to put that 5,500 horsepower onto the tarmac. Gilbertson nearest us, bit of a surprise semi-final qualifier, beating Ron Caps and Tony Pedregon to get there, and away they go, and Jim Epler smoking his tyres, but uh, Jim Epler it is who wins easily getting across the line. It looks as though uh, there was some sort of problem for Gilbertson there. Backed off. Let's take a look at it. He was getting a bit near the middle 
of the track as well. But I think he had an engine problem. He backed right out of it. Epler had uh, some problems keeping his tyres from spinning, but still goes through to the final. So he will be up against uh, Frank Pedregan. Pedregan enjoying lane choice. We'll see that final in a little while. But first of all, let's move on to the top fuelers now. The top class, if you like. The same sort of power as the funny cars, about 5,500 horsepower from their supercharged custom-built engines. But in this case, the engine behind the driver, of course, and that means all the weight over the rear wheels, even better traction, and that long front chassis and spindly front wheels just basically there to counterbalance the engine, keep the front wheels on the deck and give the driver some vestige of steering. If you didn't have a long front end on these things, they would just wheelie even more happily than they do at the moment. Of course, they have bars on the back to prevent them from uh, doing wheelies and turning right over. And you can actually see, as they set off, the underside of that chassis curving as the power goes down, curving upwards. Take a look at that. But uh, let's take a look at this semi-final. Bob van der Grift and Andrew Cowan here as they get away. Cowan in the white, black and orange, and it's Cowan, the Australian nearest the camera, who takes the win. Just 19 years old, Andrew Cowan, and he goes through to the final. So another bit of a surprise. Already put Joe Amato out of the competition, that one. And that was an impressive run indeed for Cowan. Van der Griff on the other side, getting into himself into a little bit of trouble. And Cowan coming through for the win. Right, now we're ready for the second semi-final. See how those tyres grow as he does the burnout. That's Tony Schumacher. And now we're looking inside the car of Corey McLenathan. As they compete in the second semi. On the far side, it is McLenathan who has it. Corey McLenathan taking the win. Uh, Tony Schumacher still running well in the championship by getting through to the semi-finals. In fact, that has meant that uh, Tony Schumacher has gone into the lead of the championship and maintains a slight lead in the championship, but it's very close in the overall series in top fuel. But it is Corey McLenathan from that eliminator who goes through to the final. And McLenathan will be up against Andrew Cowan for the honour of the win here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. It's one that McLenathan wants. Indy, I want it bad. <laughs> it's an important one to all of them. So he will be up, as I say, against Andrew Cowan in at the final of the top fuelers. McLenathan taking lane choice. So let's get into the finals now then, as we take a look back with the Pro Stocks. And it's going to be Warren Johnson up against his former crew chief, Greg Anderson. Greg Anderson used to look after the machinery, now he runs himself in a rival car. The two of them still get on pretty well. But Warren Johnson is the man to beat, the professor of Pro Stock, as he's sometimes called. Here is Greg Anderson into his first final, and uh, well, the nerves are surely going to play a little bit of a part here. Up against his former boss, there is Warren Johnson. Well, up in the championship at the moment as well. His son, Kurt Johnson, not making it through to the semi-finals on this occasion, but also running well in the overall Pro Stock title race for 1999. As we get ready for the final. trouble almost straight away Greg Anderson and it's an easy victory for Warren Johnson so Warren Johnson wins at Indianapolis Raceway Park Anderson having some sort of trouble there and that's a great shame didn't uh, really get to grips with it right from the start you can see the back end of the car shaking around 
And Johnson coming through to take his sixth US Nationals, his sixth win of the 1999 season, his 78th career victory. Andy, I mean, it's special to everybody, and I, I really appreciate running Greg in the final because of the fact that he's worked so hard to get to this point, and we're still the best of buddies. So very happy Warren Johnson. And in the championship, uh, well, things looking pretty good for him as well, ahead of son Kurt Johnson, Jed Coughlin third, Jim Yates fourth, and Richie Stevens holding on to fifth place. Still a number of events to go. And we're getting ready now for the funny car final. And there they are, warming up. Down below us, Jim Epler and Frank Pedrigan. There's Jim Epler's machine. Unmistakable. A remarkable uh, livery. And there is the penthouse machine of Frank Pedrigan. The US Nationals at Indianapolis. The big one for these guys. Both running Firebirds in their silhouette form. And you can see those exhaust pipes. Now, take a little look under the skin here. There is that uh, lump, that V8 lump with its superchargers being fed nitromethane and being prepared to rush up this quarter mile in around five seconds. Looking at a terminal speed of just under 300 miles per hour. In just a quarter of a mile and five seconds. Let's sit back and enjoy it. Oh, and it's, uh, it's going to be an easy win for Petragon. There's a red light, a red light for Epler. On the near side, Epler hit the red light, a foul for him, and he backed off halfway down. So Frank Pedrigan, there you can see he was away well early. And so Frank Pedrigan takes the win on the far side there. It's his third national event win. First for penthouse team owner Jim Dunn, though. And that is delight for the team indeed. In the championship, John Force still uh, very much in control of the funny cars, but he had a very poor weekend here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. So, on to the last one now. The top fuel final. And it's Corey McLenathan versus Andrew Cowan. McLenathan, you have to say, comes in as favourite, I suppose, of these two. There is Andrew Cowan, the younger man, the Australian, who's had a particularly good event here this weekend. Can he keep it all going and cause a bit of a surprise by beating Corey McLenathan in the final? Nathan, his car owned by Joe Gibbs, the man who also owns the teams of Bobby Labonte and Tony Stewart in the Winston Cup. Two of them uh, having their little bit of a falling out over the weekend, the two drivers, but uh, Joe Gibbs watching his man, Macklin Nathan, here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the NHRA. Psyching up for this one. We saw how much Corey McLenathan wants to win this. The US Nationals are so important. And he's about to find out whether he can do it or not. Watch the lights in the middle, the Christmas tree. And listen to the noise. It's a good win for McLenathan. McLenathan makes it easy at the end of the strip. And Cowan just not doing enough. Let's hear from team owner Joe Gibbs. 
Yeah. It's an exciting thing, I'll tell you that. You need to be talking to the guys that did it. I was here as a cheerleader. Uh, hey, MBNA, we've had a long year. Corey Mack finally wins the biggest race of the year. We're excited about that. Lord bless us for the great day, and we're thrilled. On the replay, you can see Mark Latham faster away initially, and he just maintained that advantage all the way up the quarter mile. Bit of uh, smoke at the end, but no problem for him. Congratulations from his rival, Cowan, but today belongs to Macklin Nathan. Indy, yes! Oh, God, I'll tell you. Fantastic, I'll tell you. The people that work on this car have worked so hard for this, and they deserve it. <laughs> A delight from the team, obvious to everybody. Macklin Nathan taking the U.S. Nationals win at Indianapolis. In the championship, Tony Schumacher has a narrow 12-point lead over Mike Dunn. Gary Seldes up there, Doug Kalita and Amato and Bernstein up there too. Still in with a chance and the top fuel championship is going to go down to the wire. And we'll be bringing you further coverage of the NHRA here on Start Your Engines over the next coming weeks.